The inside of that tube is outside your body. Okay. So it got me thinking, is anal considered intercourse or outer course, which is why Jesus says it's okay. Hi, I'm Dr. Drew, and this is Dr. Drew After Dark. Please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children. Yeah, everybody, welcome to Dr. After Dark. We appreciate those voice messages and emails at 818-253-1693. The emails at Dr. Drew After Dark at gmail.com. I'm looking through some of them right now, and as usual, they're amazing. Uh, the Booth Boys are all in full force. Uh, I must tell you, Zolo and I had a nice time together. I must tell you. Yeah, I heard about it. I heard yeah. uh, he ran you through a little game. Uh, we went a walk down memory lane, and uh, I, I, at the end of the show, I said, we, we got to do this again, because we there, there were still some classics we did not get to. Ooh, so. well, you know what we'll do? Uh, Zolo's not in uh, is not in the room for this episode, but I yep. think maybe we'll get him in on the next one. We'll continue. It. That's what I'm talking Hell about. Yeah, you'll dude. be you will. I think you'll like it. It was kind of a interesting experience. What was also interesting is that uh, the ones I didn't remember but had looked at, my reactions were pretty much exactly the same. And, interesting. And, and when they weren't the same, it was also interesting because it. It you know it showed the evolution of my experience on this show. Yeah. You so know, so what what still hit as hard as 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 uh, as it did the first it, time? It was not the hitting as hard. It was more the explanation of what was going on. I, I didn't ever ch I didn't change my opinion, but stuff that did upset me before was like yeah yeah yeah. I mean just think just think uh, you know uh, leather man in the shitter you know in the in the uh, cesspool. Like now I look at that and I was like yeah yeah anyway. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's your mom's house. Here we go. Yeah, Brown just reads like water on this show now, right? Brown is water. <laughs> Brown is water. Outside outlying behaviors are normal, and uh, I've just been. It just the there was. I forget the other things I was I was saying and thinking, but it really it just sort of stood out to me how I was or wasn't reacting to stuff, uh, and and also some stuff sort of made more sense to me too, because I didn't really know what I was watching back in those days. I didn't understand what I was being subjected to. Let's say. Yeah, so, anyway. so did you realize it was more depraved than, norm, uh, than you thought or less depraved than you thought? Uh, that I had become desensitized to being more depraved, yes, yes. So this is Welcome a, to Studio Jeans, buddy. This is a crazy place to live one's life. But I appreciate it. That's my, my, what I point out over and again. I, I love being here. I enjoy you guys. Uh, and I more than anything, the Your Mom's House audience is what I'm, I'm pleased to be embraced by. And so here we are. Speaking of them, let's get some emails here. 26-year-old female who's never had pleasure from masturbating. Does it mean I have a low sex drive? If I don't like masturbating, need to masturbate. I've always been in long-term relationships where I enjoy sex, think they're attractive, so I don't feel that's part of my problem. I'm just really confused. That's why I don't like to masturbate. Um, very common, uh, particularly in younger women. Uh, the It's a function of estrogen versus testosterone. And if testosterone goes up, that is that testosterone literally creates the drive to masturbate. Estrogen literally does the opposite. And estrogen has this other phenomenon with it, I've mentioned to you guys before, called receptivity, which is sort of openness to the experience of, of sex. And it's, a, it's a, something that men don't experience and women have. And by the same token, some women do have plenty of testosterone and do feel the desire to masturbate, but some do not. And some, it changes across their lifespan. So interesting. What? Yeah. So, so you're saying that she should get more testosterone in her system? No, nope, I'm saying that uh, maybe later on, much later in her life, she may notice a change where that does happen. I would... Mm. And by the way, um, if you're on birth control pills or anything like that, that can change everything in all kinds of directions as well, usually toward, towards shutting down. So Now, is it also possible that maybe she's just not utilizing a method to solve her puzzle? Wow, your brain works in strange ways. You mean like if she had the right equipment, then magically she would be into it? It's right, like it's maybe possible. she needs like a simian or something? No, it's possible that sometimes women, because they don't have the drive to do it, again, that the, the testosterone cates the drive to masturbate. They don't, it doesn't feel like anything that's going to do anything for them. Yet maybe, Nadab, you could teach them and it is something that they would enjoy. Ooh, I see yeah. what you're saying. Sure, I'm just the teacher for it, Drew. Dr. Yeah. Nadav is here to help. I figure. <laughs> Uh, here's an, another interesting question along that same sort of, um, well, it's not actually the same at all. It's about anal. Uh, hi, Dr. Jeans. You always say the digestive tract is technically outside the body. I love this question. Okay. Right. You've heard me say that, right? Yeah. The GI tract, the GI tract is a tube that goes from your mouth to your anus. It travels through your body, but the inside of that tube is outside your body. Okay. 
So it got me thinking, is anal considered inner chorus or outer chorus, which is why Jesus says it's okay? Well, it's uh, it's just as outer chorus as oral, right? <laughs> no. It's, it's all the same tube. It's, no. Mouth to anus, you said, is all outer tube experience, right? Y- yes, except there's some bacteria in the anus, but I thought you meant oral genital pleasure, right? Which is also outer course and blow everybody's mind the vagina's outside the body too for the most part hold on back up yep sorry hold on you're telling me every entryway is an outside no uh every entry what's that (laughs) i've never it it sounds like i'm a virgin here and all this shit what you mean i've never been inside a woman I, i i'm saying your definition of inside may oh my god here we go so for for you yeah, to get in, for you to get inside somebody's body, you would have to slit their abdomen open and then put your penis inside the peritoneal cavity. However, if somebody had a colostomy bag and you put your penis in that hole, that would still be outside the body. Are you with me, all everybody? Yeah, I don't know if I could get myself now, into that. Now the th- no, I would hope not. But in terms of the vagina being outside the body. Um, it has some special features and it communicates with inside the body more than the the gut does in the sense that the cervix is sitting right there and the cervix and the, the look up the cervical os, OS, cervical os, the cervical, oh, we are off to a flying star here today. Oh uh, yeah, we're, so, you're teaching us all, all sorts of picture. stuff, buddy. So there you go. So the cervical os or mouth, which is the, what this picture is all of, is yeah, right there in the middle the bullseye is the entrance to inside the body. The uterus is inside the body. That's, that's a stare. Any place that's sterile and that if you introduce something into it, it becomes infected, literally infected. That's inside the body. Okay. Now the uterus, are you saying that the vagina is a, like a one way street to a dead end? Is the uterus a dead end? That you're looking at the dead end right there, but it has an, an os, a hole in it. Nadav, am I really teaching this to you? This is too much. Hold, uh, dude, I'm learning the that this is. Where did you this, think the vagina went to heaven? I thought what? inside the body, Drew. <laughs> it, it goes. It ends in the cervix. To the, the guts, bro. The <laughs> cervix. To the guts. So I'm, I'm I'm starting to concern, concern myself with the fantasy that I'm evolving in Annie's world, but we'll I suppose get into that someday. But but the the cervix right is the is the top the end of the vagina. Right. And it sort of sits, it kind of tilts in a little bit, but that's a, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a cuff. It's a dead end tube. And the cervix though, that hole in the cervix communicates with the inside of the body. And so badly infected material can kind of find its way up in there sometimes. So hold on. That's how you get tubal infections. Cause they, if, if a bacteria gets through the cervical mouth into the uterus, it can get up into the tubes and cause Tubal ovarian abscesses, pelvic inflammatory disease, all that good stuff. So hold on, though. Are you saying like if I'm big enough, then not, we could get inside no, inside? You know, what no, I'm saying? Like in the no, little cervical. No, that's, no? that is a closed. That is a one. Uh, that opens <laughs> only during delivery. That's a baby comes out of that. Now hold on, Drew. and it holds the baby in the rest of the time. I got a baby too. We can't. <laughs> we can't go both ways. It's only no, one. okay. No, right. maybe during delivery. I don't want to think about it. Now, if he fucks up that S curve, though, then now he's inside the body, right? That's if he's going. We're back, back to the stuff. the sigmoid colon now. Well, the S curve, because you said if you know it's no. got to go with the curve, or else that's a surgery. So I'm saying no, if no, he no, does no, something no. that creates oh, a surgery, okay, then he's having traditional sex. S- sigmoid colon, please give me a sigmoid. You, you love you love this. You you think you're so clever. Oh, I man. know I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get me my coffee, by the way. Okay, so there is the S curve, right? There, there it is. Right? You, it's, 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 that's a good one. Yeah. So there's the S. And what I said was, if you don't make it around that curve, yes, you'll, you'll perforate the colon and go into the small bowel there, right? And then we're inside. Then you're in the body. Then, and then that person will have peritonitis and that person will need to go to the hospital in septic shock within a few minutes. So that's if they don't bleed. Hey, well, good times. So we've learned today, we've learned today that the vagina and the colon is outside the body. Things that people don't think about. Any anything that you put something into and it doesn't become infected is outside the body. Does that kind of make sense? A little. I mean, bit. even if you cut your skin, it can get infected, and that's you know, even your 
you know, your skin's outside the body, but it's a protection. Anything that's got a lining in it, mm -mm, that lining is is the protection from from the outside world, so the inside world doesn't get doesn't get tired already. Doesn't get infected. No, you're doing great. You're doing right. a great All job, right. Drew. Uh, hey, Drew. You're teaching us. I know it's my goal. My goal is to have you guys elevated by this. Um, thank you. So let's see. Somebody cares about me here, huh? No, yeah. I wonder how the hell he got that message. I, I, <laughs> I know. I wonder. Uh, you tried talking to him earlier. He didn't seem to be able to communicate with you. All right, Doctor Drew Booth Jeans. Booth Jeans. I like that. Patrick from Minnesota, twenty-one. Question about my taint. Or his chode. Uh, yesterday I was watching the newest episode of IMH. Uh, watching it began to cough, and during my last cough, my taint began to feel like it was getting stabbed. There was a sharp pain that lasted for 15 to 20 seconds. It freaked the fuck out of me. Is there something wrong with me? Can this mean something serious? Not typically. I uh, hope to hear from you guys. Please somebody beat me. I'm home here now in Garth's Facebook comment section. Hashtag leave Tommy Buns alone, Garth. Patrick. Uh, all right, James. Uh, yeah, you're, you're fine. It's remember me talking about pubic coccygeous muscle spasm. That's kind of another version of that. You're 21. So it's like unlikely to be anything really. I mean, if you were older, you might look at your prostate and your urethra to make sure everything's okay. But yeah, you know, if it doesn't keep happening or doesn't, doesn't get prolonged or it's really uncomfortable for you, even then it ends up being nothing most of the time. So, all right. Uh, Nadav dealer's choice. Where would where should we go next? Ooh, where yeah, should we go been, next? Yeah. Uh, voicemails? Mm, yeah. Yeah, if you have voicemail. I love it, dude. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah, all right. Here's a fun one. What's up, Dr. Drew? Mm. My name's Cameron. I'm pretty drunk right now, but I've seen a lot of things about putting your balls out in the sunlight, canning your balls to get more testosterone. Is that real or is it fake? I'm trying to know. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, seems that's an. A, 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 you're not going to affect your sperm count, right? But I wonder if somebody somewhere saw that the Sertoli cells in the testes, which produce the testosterone, can be stimulated by UV light. I've never read that. Maybe we should look it up. Do you want to look mm, it up? That's interesting. UV light, testosterone stimulation, Sertoli. I was going to say that the uh, uh, the balls are outside the body. They so are? No, 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 no. <laughs> they're inside the body, but they're positioned close to outside the body they're in the body they're inside am i uh, doing uv light test what uh testosterone no no testosterone not test testosterone o-s-t-e-r uh sertoli s-e-r-t-o-l-i okay let's see what that says i uh infertility la, la, la. you started with uv light right that was okay uv yeah. light testosterone keep going so hmm don't see anything like that. It's not so even on the first page. Now here, yeah, I don't see it. So you would, if there was something like that, you would, you would sort of see that. But here's the other thing: yeah, is the data that, isn't there, right? When you heat the testes, they don't like that, so they produce less sperm and stuff. So I'm, I imagine there's nothing to this. That's what I'm guessing. It, well, yeah, because also the don't the testes already have a temperature self-regulating mechanism? Right. Where if they're too hot, then they'll drop outside of your nut. Uh, that's drop why they're outside there. Of your body. That's why they're there all the and time. And if they get too cold, then they will get sucked it, into your. It's body. mostly that they get too cold; they get sucked in. When they, the rest of the time they're outside because that's where they're optimally producing testosterone and and uh, and uh, sperm. Uh, but if it gets too cold, something called the cremasteric response pulls them back in. These are muscles around the scrotum and testes that lift up just step in the ocean you'll see it in full action it always happens so um speaking of uh maybe a shower and not a grower you, you, we had a fight about whether we were going to watch the big dick dance today yeah i was going to leave it out but then you're like no 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 I, I, show me that I, big show dick. me this i want to understand what this is all about yeah so let's see it so anatomically let me know uh you know if if uh this uh this guy can hurt someone outside of their body or find their way inside should be interesting where's the penis of his breast what oh I see there is he a rat where is not the penis okay with a good size penis, but I, I don't know. I can't say that that's a huge penis. We need to we need to have more of this guy, do we? But, <laughs> but I like that he's got a penis dance. I mean, he's I mean, into it. Let me see if I and can he's find not, He's not a young man, by the way. This is not a young dude. So good for him. No, yeah, he's going. 
He's going hard. I, 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 somebody tell me what's going on here. Is he selling beer? Is he is he collecting bottles for reclamation? Yeah, maybe this is a recycling program in the country <laughs> that he's in. But I mean, is that the sort of his uh, advertisement? Like, bring me your beer bottles. Yeah, and then I'll give you. And I'll give day. you a dance. Uh, yeah, I yeah, think I would, dance. Yeah, I, I would do that. I'd bring up my bottle. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to see that dance. If that's the only way to get that dance out of him, I, I bring well, a beer bottle. Well, dude, I think you already owe him a bottle, man. You just I, saw I, the dance. I know. I listen. I would if I could, but I don't know where he is. It does not look like it's nearby. No, yeah, I think this might be in Santa Ana. Oh yeah, nice. Well, anyway, all right, give me something else. How about some TikToks just to kind of warm me up? Yeah, sure. We'll cleanse the palate. Let's see. Let's see what up. we. Uh... Not even cleansing, just a warm up. Okay, just yeah. All right, let's let's open you up a little, Drew. Mm. Exactly. If any woman needs a real man in their life, here's my phone number: three one eight four six five. I'm looking for a serious relationship. Oh. Well, good luck, sir. Uh, what's going on in the background? Is that like a radio or is there like a lot of women chatting in the back? Do you hear that? I have a feeling it's not a lot of women. Well, let's, let's play that back again. I'm going to listen more carefully. If any it woman does not sound like radio. needs a real man in their life, here's my phone number. 318-465. I'm looking for a serious relationship. Sounds like kids to me. Kids? All right. All right. So that's it. Well, good for him. Uh, I, again, I, what I'm more interested in is who responds. You know what I mean? I just would love to meet those people. I wish they would put up a TikTok about having met this guy or responded to him. Huh? I no. mean, uh, I, I would hope that he at least has a couple responding. Um, I imagine. They must. They must. People must respond yeah, because these guys do wouldn't they? do this. Would they keep doing it? Would there be so many of these guys? If, I don't think. Or do they end up with like a prostitute looking for money? You know what I mean? Maybe this is like the move right before getting a prostitute. But I would think if, if you're a prostitute, maybe you'd respond to this guy and go, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a long-term relationship too. It's going to cost you 400 bucks, but you know what I mean? Boy, the, I feel like the I feel like process, that's a lot of work for someone to do. They're like going out looking for clients, being like, "Hey, mm -hmm. you seem pretty desperate. Do you want to?" Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah. I feel like it's mostly like they they just throw the lures out and they wait to to get the fish. What's a little confusing about this guy to me is he doesn't have the the eye or the teeth, huh. and he's relatively well grown. Uh, oh no, I mean I'm seeing from this angle. I do think that there is a vital tooth missing. Oh really? Good. Let's see it again. Let's just, uh, then we concentrate on that now. <laughs> a vital tooth. Oh yeah. Okay. There we All go. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I believe that's a canine. I feel. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I feel like that probably uh, he uh -huh. does a lot of his chewing on one side of his mouth. <laughs> oh my god. Well, at least the ones that remain are straight and look white, sort of. And we have a TikTok eye. He's looking down so thoroughly you can't really tell where he's. Lo you know what the eyes are doing, whether they're focusing. Is he, does he look up at any point? Um. Well, I don't think he's picking like about, the best angles. Yeah. What I like about this guy is that he had to be deconstructed for me to understand him. So, all right, I get it. Otherwise, it seems perfectly normal to you, right? Perfect. Well, how about the, <laughs> the no shirt? That's a nice touch. Yeah, that is. Ooh, I mean, you know what I am noticing? Uh, I think he shaves his chest. Ooh, it looks like that. Unless I, you think? this guy cares. No, but you know what? He's putting work in his goatee. You know what? I think this guy fucks more than we think. No, I don't think that's true. Or though, again, if he does, I would like to just to see some TikToks from these ladies. Who gets? Who does this guy end up with? I, I just that me is astonishing. All right, give me another TikTok. Well, oh, good yeah. morning, Thank my you. Good queen. morning. I like the way he sits. He leans over time you. Time to wake up. Time to put them feet on the ground like, and like take as off. Though, on as though I'm lying in bed, and here's the king. All right, let me. me pull them covers off. Uh oh. <laughs> there That's we a good go. Actor. Marcel Marceau Kiss here. That nice, beautiful ass of yours. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Oh, he's All my right, ass. my queen. Time to get up. I'll go in and run us a, a nice hot shower, and I'll meet you in the shower. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. What's what's reflecting I'll in his eyes? Let it go a little. Stop it when you see it. Uh, uh, uh. That's his phone. <laughs> oh, it's the phone down yeah. there. Oh shit. Of yeah, course. we're seeing a little. Of uh, yeah. All right, keep going. That beautiful body of yours from head to toe, and make sure you're nice and clean to go to work. Then we'll go get some breakfast today. We'll go out and get some breakfast. I'll see you in the shower. <laughs> I love you, my queen. I uh, remember I used to kind of feel good when King would talk to me, and now I feel like throwing up. I don't know why. Why I've shifted.
I think it's may- maybe because he's doing a little bit more objectifying than normal. Yeah, it's a <laughs> little more, more over the one. top. Yeah, <laughs> and, all, and all the uh, sort of improv. That the what is it called when you when you pantomiming of stuff? <laughs> the pantomiming. Uh, thing. Space work. Yeah, <laughs> he's doing a lot of space work yeah. with the covers. And, just and, let me take these covers off and, you. And unfortunately, <laughs> we, we just talked about somebody grooming their chest and shoulders, and he he could do use a little work. So I'm focused in on that a little bit. Oh, I see. So now we're comparing uh, our kink to uh, to other cool guys. To other cool guys. Tips. Yeah. All it's, right. It's amazing that. Hmm. Think about how long King's been doing this. You know what I mean? I mean, he's been doing it for a while. Wait, do you I'm, think though a shaven a shaved chest and some shoulders maybe is gonna fix this? No, it would just make me not want to throw up so much. So I'm just saying. It'll just and, get and you I mean, more. I've been desensitized mood. by Josh, but I haven't seen him in a while. So you know, I'm, I'm still. I'm reverting back to my normal sensibilities, which is I don't like people doing shoulder hair porn. Where where is Josh? What's been happening with him? I haven't seen him in a while. Josh is good. He's uh yeah. he's he's over doing his own thing, and uh, yeah, he's uh, he's doing the Josh Potter show out of uh, the Honey Dew Studio for now. I think. Did I? I think I need to. Did I ever do that podcast with him? He asked me to do it. And I'm happy to do it. And he didn't follow Ooh, up. That's a good question. And I, maybe he has to get his. Uh, his uh, anus fixed before he's willing to talk to me. He's afraid I'm going to give him shit about that, which I will. So, I, f- I feel like we need to get you back on the is, race. Is, is that still up, my uh, clean, my uh, debridement of his wound? Yeah, well, yeah, we never yeah. took it down, I okay. don't think. So if those of you don't know what we're talking about, he has a pilonidal cyst that was that is enormous and was draining. It was a, oh, we're going to go to it? Ew. No, we're not going to We're not going to show it. Oh, but, you're going to show what a pilonidal cyst yeah. is. Uh, why don't we show it a little bit? What difference? It's on the site, no? Pilo, P I L O. There you are. That's it. Yeah, those images. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. here. This one is actually looks exactly like yeah, Potter's. That is like Potter's. A cartoon. His yeah. was his was actually juicing and pussing and all kinds of good stuff. And it and it tracked all the way up his back. That's what scared me. Oh yeah, it, it so. got pre- It was much deeper than this one uh, tends to. Yes, tends to make you yes, think. Yes, yes. And you see how the the hair is a critical piece of forming the the cyst. Right. So what what's happening with it is that it's pretty much just like a clogged pore that just gets out of control. Yes, and once it gets going, it's its own thing. And uh, pilonidal in Latin means nest of hair. That doesn't gross you out <laughs> with that name and looking at the picture. Uh, I don't know what will. Nest of hair. Yeah. Boy, the learning just never stops. Yeah, and you see, there. look at the little cartoon up there, and the, that's a that's a hair growing the wrong way into the cyst, right? Oh, so that's it. That just it just hair. Does, it takes almost a, a U turn, and it just keeps on yeah. growing that way. Yeah, it's just... one of the ways. That's one of the ways you get woof. there. Yeah, woof and <laughs> Woof. Yeah, I, I think I tried watching a, a popping uh, popping oh video, my. and I think they undid one of these guys before it got to, like, Potter's uh, status. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, I don't know how people find pleasure in watching popping videos. Yeah, I know. They're pretty wild. Do you like it? No, I really don't. I mean, I, I understand a little bit, but the, the over-the-top, I mean... I know what's coming. First of all, I know it's coming out of an abscess, which is pus. And it's sometimes under pressure and it goes all over the place. Mm-hmm. I know what's coming out of an infected uh, sebaceous cyst, which is sebum, which looks like toothpaste coming out of the thing. And that's gross. And you know what you don't appreciate? Well, maybe you did when we did our surgery. It, it doesn't smell good. Did it smell? I don't remember. Do we? Have I don't remember smelling it, but you yeah. know what? I do also know that I was fully tensed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really? Like, I think I wasn't breathing for most of that recording. I think I was just holding my breath. Why? What's the matter with you? You've been working at your mom's house for a long time. Yeah, well, Drew, I think that's a natural body reaction that when you see something really traumatic, you just tense up. Uh, I, I think, what, what was the worst part for you when the Q-tip went all the way up to his uh, mid-spine? <sighs> I think it was the seeing stuff come and, out. And, and where was, was Annie during all that? Oh, I mean, I, I think I'd like to, I think I know Annie pretty well at this point. I knew that, that he wanted no part Did of you it. see the video, Annie? I'm just curious. I mean, I was there when you were recording it, but yeah, yeah. I was just, you know, looking the other way and making sure that everything was recording and everything. Could, could yeah, you yeah. Could you look at that video? Like you want me to right now is what you're asking? Well, if you haven't seen it, I'm just wondering. It might be an interesting thing to, you know, see how any. Ra- there we go. <laughs> it's happening. Oh, man. Why are we going? It's oh, happening. Right. It's happening. The... Hey, you know what? Drew gets what he wants. <laughs> yeah. So, well, look at all that. Wow. So, house call Potter. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. And he, is any, first of all, you've got to monitor this and adopt to make sure he's able to watch. You know what I mean? We have to. Oh, here we go. So, here we go. 
What's the matter, buddy? Yeah, I'm just, you know, I'm just looking. I'm just like, I'm kind of dissociated. I'm not going to lie. I <laughs> you really... dissociate, but the question is, do you, do you actually, can you, can you watch it? Uh, I mean, yeah, I could. There's, there's the wound. So that's yeah. before we even touched it. It was just wet. Uh, it was, that was the natural. What is, what is, what is that fluid? That's uh, essentially pus. It's, it's serous fluid. Pus inflammatory fluid. Melted hair. Oh, <laughs> you got to fucking focus it? Come on, Lindsay. You're too good of a cameraman. <laughs> we need a new house call. We need to do something else. Does anybody have any abscesses they want drained or anything? Hell no. Yeah. Uh-uh. And uh, so this one I think was. Oh yeah, we're done. We're good. Uh, yeah, oh, th- yeah. This was this was the first Ooh. round. The second one was I numbed it up a lot more. Remember? Yeah, I remember. This you one I went didn't in do there t- with a syringe quite a few times. Yeah, this one I didn't do so much with because it was hurting him too much. You know what I it sure is? It I think it's the packing that got me the most. Obvious. Well, this isn't the big packing, right? This was the small packing. I think you still kind of got in there a bit. Yeah, I'm sure, and it didn't feel good to him. I'm sure, but. Yeah, you you didn't like the packing, huh? You know, Drew. It's I, I know we're both doctors at this point, but look at it. I like the way Lindsay goes right into the dog. Yeah, thing. it's I do, It's not it's not fun to watch this. I'm not. You do, oh you, you wouldn't want to be a surgeon or even a dermatologist for goodness sakes. I, I feel like a dermatologist is one of the grossest like uh, doctor uh, professions you could be. Any? Are you okay? Nah, man. I don't like. Is it supposed to bleed like that? That looks like some dark ass blood. Ain't Bleeding that, is man. good. Bleeding's the healthy. Bleeding's tissue. good. That's yeah. the first time I heard that yeah. shit, bro. Well, when you got a wound like that, you want it to bleed a little bit. That's that's mm. good. Other things that are dead don't. Look at the <laughs> the horror on it, the terror on his face. It's too much. Anyway, we did a much bigger exploration when he came back. Is this all part of the same video? Oh, um, nice. I have a feeling since this is like. Uh, <laughs> Well, go, Since we're go, getting this much action at the top of the video, I feel like the probably second part is still in here. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, uh, yeah he's there we go. Different st- just just yeah. get the part where the Q-tip uh, explores. Oh, the my thing. God. There we go. That was so it. So here we are injecting a, tr- a topical uh, numbing not, agents. Not topical. I was giving him a lot of anal- analgesic that time. And uh, But go to, go to the Q-tip. It's, it's ahead <laughs> a little bit, I think. There it is. Oh, there is the Christ. Q-tip. There's so the there's wound, the so it's better oh. now. Oh, and- <laughs> yeah, 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 Look at how deep that motherfucker's going, Jesus Christ, dude. And, and I stopped at a certain point. I did not want to go further than that. That was enough, thank you. Here we go. Yeah, look how far that thing goes. It just goes and goes and goes. And he has not had this thing repaired yet, gentlemen. Would yeah. you would you get on your friend's case? How long? I, can't... I feel like this was like a year ago at this point. I think it oh was my... more than a oh year. It was pre-COVID, God. guys. It was pre-COVID. We would have had masks on if it was uh, COVID time, right? I think you're right. So uh, there we go. Yeah, guys, everyone check out the Josh Potter show. Uh, l- search for it on YouTube. Rate, review, subscribe. And, to and I would agree iTunes. he deserves a little compensation for having sh- shared this with everybody. So let's go I'll, I'm support the Josh Potter show. And I need to be on it. If I haven't been, I don't think I have been at off. So we got to set that up. Yeah, you know what? I'll set up a, a follow-up uh, uh, for you yeah. to get back on there. Yeah, let's do that. So there we go. Uh, great Josh Potter, buddy. Perhaps you're feeling depressed or struggling with uncertainty, difficulty sleeping, meeting your goals. BetterHelp offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. BetterHelp will assess your needs, match you with a licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Not a crisis line, not a self-help line, professional counseling, therapy done securely. Broad range of expertise available, which uh, is not available locally in all areas. Service is available for clients worldwide, however. You can log into your account anytime, send a message to your counselor. You will get timely, thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule your weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in waiting rooms or deal with that uncomfortable stuff. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating therapeutic matches so they make it easier and free to change if needed. I've referred family, I've referred patients, I've referred friends to BetterHelp. Been very impressed with the therapist and the services they provide. More affordable than traditional offline counseling. Financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Our podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash after dark. Visit betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash after dark and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. All right, and Annie, are you with us again? Are you back in your body? I mean, <laughs> I'm he- I'm here physically. I think. 
But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in another realm mentally now. I'm, I'm out. sorry. Don't, well, don't, I, I hope you don't ask me a question later because I'm going to be dissociating about this exact we moment. Gotta, we got to teach the rest you. Of the how, we got to teach you controlled dissociation so it doesn't affect you so much. Ooh, controlled dissociation. Yeah. Yes. I mean, dissociation is not really a normal thing unless it's a really traumatic circumstance. Well, I was just talking the other day to someone about uh, when when I was growing up, I used to be able to. There'd be a moment where I'd think about, oh, I am me, I exist, I am in this room with yeah. this person, and then I could I could feel that and like focus in on that. Yes, yes. And it, it'd be very quick, and obviously you go back to forgetting. It's like a more extreme version of realizing that you're breathing, and then yes, now you yes, can't. That's exactly right. Okay, okay. And, but but there but you kind of sort of have to learn to not use dissociation when you have unpleasant feelings. Right, because dissociation is a is a mal is is adaptive in the setting of trauma, but it's maladaptive later when you should be able to flexibly tolerate stuff. Well, the the only thing that I can say now is when when I used to be able to focus in on that, like when I would think about yeah. that fact that yeah. I am a person, I exist. You're in your body. Yeah, you're there. Yeah. I can't do that anymore. I it's it's impossible to do now. Like mm. I'm not saying that it'll never come back, but. I can't do it anymore, no matter how hard I think about it. I'm, mm. I'm just when you when you dissociate, you mean when that happens, you no, can't get back. W what I'm saying is, I don't think. Um, Are you dissociated all the time? I think I'm literally always yeah, dissociating. I, yeah, what, I'm, what I'm always on autopilot. <laughs> you know we well, do? I'm just wondering, maybe Drew, we could use some of these <laughs> methods to uh, to help any uh, force him to look at the things. Yeah, that to I'm look afraid at. It, it's re-traumatizing him is not going to make this better. No, but it's then about, it's we're going to. It's about encouraging him to be present when he is having these moments. And well, it's either is there a difference him. between encouraging and forcing? Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> So, so I would soothe him in these moments and go, any, let's, let's bring it back. Let's learn to regulate. You're here. You're safe. It's no big deal. That's an old mechanism that's kicked in and you can uh, be back in your body. No problem. You're, you can do that. I mean, uh, it, it'd be interesting. And <laughs> that was, that was any's version of fuck you. <laughs> so, so, uh, the translator so, himself. <laughs> What's up? So that'd be interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, but uh, you know we can work on our network, and it's up to you. But but I, the, you do dissociate a lot, and you're and you're sort of aware of it, and so the awareness is part of the deal. And if you can learn to kind of bring it back, and not you know think about the feelings that triggered it, and sort of try it. And but you need a safe space, right? You need to be with another person who's like really attuning to you. And I'm not sure Nadav's that guy. <laughs> and, 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 Absolutely and, and, not. Yeah. This nigga is the last person yeah, that would okay. make me feel right, safe about that. But well, well said, sir. Well said. <laughs> hey, hey, well said. Eddie, I just want you to grow as a person, nah, nigga, whether you want, you want it or not. Nah, <laughs> fuck your shit. You want right. content. You want laughs. You right. laughing ass nigga. You you gonna be laughing the whole time. Like he's dissociated. Yeah. Ah, I yeah. guarantee. Why can't I want both at the same yeah. time? So, Unbelievable. So so I I was trying to be that soothing presence, but it's pretty hard unless you're sort of in in the same vicinity, two bodies in space. And um, you'll notice that there's a little rage underlying the dissociation, which is very common. Very, very, very common. Yeah, there you go. A little bit. You know yeah, a little bit. I know. I, I feel you. You're, you're, listen, I'm the, I'm the any champion in terms of championing you and your cause. So, no, uh, you, you really are. And, yeah. and I, I appreciate you for that. I, I think what it is, is uh, I'm just, man, like, you want to get a little deep real quick. I don't even know who the fuck I am anymore, man. <laughs> It's been like well, 15 years you know, since the past, since the last time I feel like I didn't dissociate. Well, Bro, first I was of all, a child. Yeah, <laughs> and, and first of all, uh, having now been at your mom's house for how many years have I been here? I feel like uh, like three years now, two you've years. Been, uh, I think you're around two and a half. Two and a half. Uh, Any, I feel the same way. I don't know who the fuck I am anymore here because this place has completely deconstructed my personhood. <laughs> so I can so just imagine really how you feel. So I, I'm just. <laughs> saying uh it's it gets a little immersive here at your mom's house all i'm saying but but to your point uh that dissociation does get in the way of identity formation right and so that's your in fact you do know who you are and if we sat down and talked about it there, there's no doubt in my mind you'd have a clear sense of who you are but it feels like you don't know who you are right because when you're dissociated it's you don't know where you are what's going on right and and part of who we are as a person is the spontaneous feelings that come out of our body. And that's part of what the self is. And so you've dissociated from that, or at least right now you're dissociated from it. And I bet when you were back in your body, you wouldn't quite feel quite as lost on who you are and stuff. Um, but the more you can connect to your spontaneous feelings, the clearer your sense of identity is. Okay. Make sense? I mean, 
I man, I, I wish I had the confidence in my inner self that uh, you have the confidence in, in me. Uh, I, I wish yeah. I could match that confidence. Yeah, I get man, it. it I get better. it, and that's exactly how you would get better. You'd have somebody like me there going, "I I know this to be true," and I and it, and by the way, there are certainly cases I can't say that about right that I'm I've worked with over the years where it's like, oh yeah, they're right. they need to get out in the world even to, and test reality before they can understand who they are. You're in, you've been in the world for a long time. You know who you are in the world. You know your skills and benefits and things like that. Now that's not the self per se, but you learn about the boundaries of self through, through being in the world, right? And then the other way is with relationships and you're pretty good at relationships, right? Uh, pretty good I mean I, you'd have to ask those people I mean, in you're those okay. relationships you're, at least you can form and break them you can you know maybe it's too fast or maybe you wish they were longer or whatever but but you can you can do it and some people can't even do that so yeah, like I said man I wish I had the same confidence in me well, that you the, I, I see a new a new segment of the show here is where oh, I shit. talk to your former partners that could be really oh, enlightening fuck really no, interesting. that's done we out of we out I'd well, rather fucking show there, you there must be some right now than, than you talk to my ex uh uh there must right, be some, I guess we could just do uh, that instead the Dobbs <laughs> in you, you told about the, the Dobbs nefarious motivation you now see it there in here. full full uh, daylight Emmy let's uh, let's switch seats I'll switch and then you could just show your asshole into the camera no, and, uh, no, 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 no. Jesus I thought he wanted to talk Christ. to the ladies. You see what I'm saying about yes. this motherfucker? I, 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 listen, he's doing <laughs> the same thing ass. to me. <laughs> it's same thing. We're, we're in the same boat here. But uh, so, yeah, Nadav is a sinister dude. I never thought about him that way. You're right, evil. Eddie. Guys, I'm just thinking about the good of the show, and I think I, this would be a great show. I, mm -mm. I, I, some, somebody, somebody did guys, something to him. Guys, let me do my job. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, but any, there must be some, some folks out there that are not strictly unhappy with you in the X position. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe one or two people that would be like, be, if you have a friend still that was, you know, briefly a relationship or whatever, it'd be really, I'm not saying I'm going to sick Nadav on it. I'm saying it could be really interesting. Yeah, it's like, man, I, I maybe there is, but I always imagine once we're out that like, nah, it was the worst. I was the no, I know how guys person, are. You know Listen, I mean? I, that's the way we so, are as men. We're like, uh, but done and done, and you feel guilty and ashamed. You're out, and like, oh, I must have been terrible. And you know, men do a lot of that. Some men are able to maintain friendships. That's not the common thing, though. Most men are like, Phew, they're just gone. You know, Drew, why is that? I I don't know. I really don't know what that is. It's it's got to be you know sort of the. I don't think it's socialization. It, it feels because it's such a motivational tendency in many men that they just want to go to the next thing. They just they, and they're fearful of being sucked back or whatever. I don't know what it is. Well, I, I feel like for me, it's a it's a very different like environment. If you're, I don't know, if, if you get a girl with you and like you know, I don't know, you got her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like you earned that yeah. in a way. It's it's weird to go from that to like. Friend. Oh, I'm just around. Your, your friend, yeah. yeah. It feels like you always have her in a way, and if you don't, it's just weird. It's well, I don't it, know it's what this weird. Is. It's it feels weird to a lot of men, and it um, this whole got her kind of feeling makes men feel guilty, and, and that's not an unusual feeling. Men kind of feel like that, but then when they break it, they feel kind of guilty, and so eh, you know, there we are. So that makes us kind of run away. So it's it's weird and guilt evoking, and not what we want. You know, we want to you know be with somebody and we're fearfully vote and you know men don't want to be bad guys they don't want to hurt people and they're fearful of evoking jealousies and hurt and all this stuff so they just kind of run away like I, they, we can't it's almost like relationships particularly for younger men are so nuanced and, and complicated that we just sort of run from them when we're younger particularly that does that fit no yeah for yeah. sure and yeah. and you're right in that i don't want to evoke like jealousy and whatever because yeah. in my experience if we do stay around like yeah. just you know friends and whatever yeah someone's getting hurt R right and it could hurt. be the new relationship that mm -hmm. gets jealous it doesn't have to be the old one so yeah so Usually. i i kind of understand when men do that it's not what you call an evolved thing for us to do and if i were socializing men differently which this is the socialization part i would encourage them to fight off those instincts and to learn how to navigate relationships and stuff but uh, that's not how we are. Uh, all right. Where? Wow, man. Voicemail. Let's go. Yeah. This, this is down a rabbit hole. I'm loving the way this Woo! episode's going, man. All right. Hello, my kings and queens above 18. Thank you, honey. I'm a 25 year old broad here wondering if Dr. Hitler knows why, for one or two days leading up to and during my period, my orgasm spasms are painful as fuck. Oh. Is it because of my PCOS or because of just general inflammation in the downstairs? Oh, interesting. Thank you much, mommies. Love you. Yes, we love you too, honey. Um, 
a, a lot of thoughts about her. First of all, wouldn't it be great if she did a Kings and Queens Above 18 video? It would be much, much more appealing than the, the king himself. Well, yeah, I'm sure she'd get a lot more responses. So, so PCOS can be associated with inflammation, um, though not necessarily so. And PCOS is pulmonary cyst. Polycystic ovarian disease, That's ovarian it. syndrome. And uh, what, what she's talking about probably is inflammation of the round ligaments. When you have an orgasm, there, there are ligaments, suspensory ligaments, essentially for the uterus. And the uterus kind of contracts during orgasm. And if things are inflamed, the muscles, those ligaments, the, it, just, it just pulls on things in a way that can make sense to maybe painful. I'm much more apt to be associated with endometriosis and, and infections in the tubes, things like that. Um, I'm wondering... I'm wondering if maybe, you know, around your time of ovulation, as you say, uh, there may be other cysts forming at the same time and some are non, uh, n don't actually ovulate. They're just there causing inflammation. So that kind of makes sense to me. So yeah, it's probably related to your PCOS and, uh, hey, well, good time. And there is a certain amount of inflammation associated with the corpus luteum anyway in some women. That's sort of where dysmenorrhea comes from uh, in that the uterus also starts to become inflamed, not inflamed, it, it sloughs off during the period, and so it's getting ready to do that, and I can see how that might all be irritating as well. Okay, that's a good one. Another mm. one. All right. Hi, mommies. Hi. Uh, my name is Josh. I'm 21. I'm from Connecticut. I have a question regarding uh, pheromones, I guess. So I fucked some stupid shit nine days ago, and for like three or four days after, while showering and thoroughly cleaning myself, my dick still smelled like her pussy for a long time. And then... Um, today, so that's nine days after, I was checking to see if I needed a shower before I went to the doctor today, and I smelled like her. Not necessarily her pussy, but like her. And it's been nine days, and I shower every day. I'm like, her. so uh, if you could explain that, that'd be great. Thank you. Keep them high and tight. Bye. Well, well hey, good time. Uh, first of all, the, the Hey Hitler thing, I, I was doing a, uh, I think, I don't know if I told you guys this, I was doing a, a live stream. I do a live stream on a regular basis at drdrew.com, everybody, or drdrew.tv. Or Facebook, Dr. Drew. A lot of people will come in there and go, hey, Hitler, and and the world just reacts to it like, I can't believe they're saying this horrible thing to you. They're calling you Hitler. I'm like, it's it's aloha in your mom's house. It's yeah, just, it's it just, means it's they a, like you. <laughs> it's, it's it's aloha. We have a lot of alohas here. Please be dummy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here, home here now, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, so, um, so he got a little... Um, he, he, this is not yeah. pheromones. Yeah, it's not pheromones. He just needs to shower a little harder. No, this sometimes there can be odor causing both bacteria and and proteins that can get bound to the skin. And so the reason one of the, the yeah, evolutionary biological theories is that the reason that say women have these smells is so literally she could mark a guy. So if uh, somebody needs to know if somebody has been around, there is the evidence. This, this is either hers or uh, if you come home with that, it's like, hey, what have you been up to? Uh, that didn't work so well. Uh, so it, it's not it, to, to be that pungent and to be last that long is certainly well yes, done for is. her. Well done for her. Uh, but and he may want to use some, um, I don't want him to irritate his, junk but uh antibacterial soaps you know fizzle hikes things like that there's so something got in there that bound to his skin and uh s plain old soap may not be enough to break it free so now interesting. drew i also uh i think i remember i can't remember if i learned this on this show if i learned it off <laughs> mic but can't wait um that's a big part of like what uh you know pubic hair is about right it's about yep. trapping smells yep the same uh, thing with the that. underarm hair, hair. so maybe yep. this guy just kind of needs to uh you know shave do a, yeah do a little uh, do a little he, manscaping he didn't say you're hair. right that's a good the dog thank you thank you doctor <laughs> doctor and um, is in the house baby it, it's an interesting thought and that might be where it's caught and he's not aware of it but he kept saying it was his penis that and it could be there too so but yes and dr nadav has a great idea there that's another thing to really do a big old manscape and uh see if that doesn't help out so all right, another voice message. Oh. I'm liking this. All right. Hey, mommies. This is Mario from Chicago. Right. Uh, I'm just calling because I had one of my buddies come over, 28-year-old male, mm -hmm. to watch the YMH live stream four, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, the one with the really cool eyeball guy. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was just wondering, because he passed out, and just wondering why that happened. 
why is it when people see gruesome stuff that they just magically pass out? Ah, oh, the, your, uh, his friend? Pa- I just messed up. His friend passed Thanks. out? Is that I what got a DUI, yes. baby. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, You know, Zola and I did not revisit I, 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 which I was sort of disappointed. That, that to me was the reason to do another show right there just well, to he's, visit. he's still a relatively fresh cool guy i just think but he's a classic we got we got to see <laughs> yes, i didn't see is. four stroke I, I had a lot of stuff i didn't see that just like i need to see again so and, and i need to need to judge my reaction so anyway why do people pass out you know why did any dissociate right it's it it is your autonomic nervous system and it's typically the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve actually mediates dissociation too which the is vagus nerve the vagus show me the vagus vagus it's a cranial nerve, not v-e-g-a-s it's v-a-g-u-s we're going to vagus baby not a vagus or vagus v-a-g-u-s i've never even thought of that all right the las vegas nerve um none of these are good pictures of it eh, they, it's a it's a cranial nerve uh it comes out of your skull and it goes one in the main trunk initially hits the heart okay and when it uh, is stimulated by something, you know, sensory that is overwhelming, uh, you can pass out. You can swoon because the heart slows down. Uh, it slows the heart way, way, way down sometimes, and then you lose your blood pressure, and then that's it. It's sort of the vagus coming out of the out of the uh, out of the skull there. And uh, the vagus nerve is a really interesting nerve. The picture you've got up there shows how embedded it is in the neck, which when you're developing is called the branchial pouches, and it turns out that the vagus also mediates all kinds of other socio-emotional exchange mechanisms like our voice and even our ear where we can tune to certain things because there's a muscle in our ear that the vagus controls. And it's just a really interesting nerve that we're just, when I was in medical school, all we learned was about that outflow to the heart that slows everything down. But it turns out there's all, you can see just from where the vagus nerve goes, there's a lot going on. Uh, that goes in both direction. And in fact, there's a lot of information coming back from the body. I was just, um, oh, here we go. We're going to some interesting stuff today. I, love uh, I was just listening to a lecture with it. I'm, I'm okay. So did I tell you what happened to me with learning Greek? Uh, you said that you, uh, that you were able to pick it up faster than yes. you anticipated. Yes. Right? Be- because, and, and it's been a post COVID phenomenon and it's been weird. Um, and when we got to Greece, uh, everybody would stop me when I would start using the, I was not fluent or anything, but I was, I could kind of get, say stuff. Um, and they'd stop me and me and they go, Oh my God, your accent. And I thought I did not pay any attention to accent. I didn't even think about accent, which is part of what you hear sometimes from people who get head injuries. They could wake up with accents and things, or they could mimic things more readily. Yep. We were very familiar with that on your mom's house. Why is that? Uh, foreign, ac- foreign accent syndrome. Oh, really? You've talked about that? Well, yeah, because, well, I mean, I think a lot of the ones that we found were fakies. No, 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 there were a couple authentic ones, too, where they just well, all of a sudden wake up with a Chinese accent. Right. There was that Asian that woke up with that, the Irish accent. That's mm-hmm. right. And so I am one of these people uh, now where, because I kept saying forever that that uh, COVID was like a head injury. It was like a global head injury. And it, it messed me up for a long time. And the reason I started learning language is I was trying to work my brain out, and it worked. It really helped me. But I also increase my language uh, acquisition capacity and a capacity for for accents that I did, just didn't have before. So huh. anyway, so now I'm working on um, my, my French. So, so I'm back to French, right? When you were in Greece then, were you like, uh, Mamma Mia, can I have some gyros? No, it's more like Thaithala gyro, uh, which is I would like, Thaithala. Uh, so uh, I've gone back to my French, which I am semi-fluent at, and uh, that's a little different. It's not quite as easy as before. Anyway, but I was listening to, as, as and now is my custom, and I listened to about three hours a day of French lessons, uh, and they were talking about chaleur à la cœur, which is a, a heat. We what was that? Chaleur. The, like there's a heat in your heart that you oh, feel. Oh, chakras. And, well, and I started thinking about it. I think, wow, that is interesting because the vagus back to the vagus nerve now, is not just an outflow nerve, it's also an inflow nerve, an afferent nerve. So it's sending information up to the brain. And one of the ways the heart communicates with us is through heat. And I thought, no one ever really makes that explicit. Like when you, the warmth we feel in our heart, like in this particular French presentation, they were talking about the sourire de baby, you know, as a, a baby smile. And, uh, and it creates a warmth in your chest. And, and that's a real feeling and it's a real signal. 
And any, let's go back to you and your dissociation. If you're just, if you're dissociated, you can't feel that stuff because you're kind of disconnected from your body, right? Uh, bad news for you, chief. I just stopped doing it. What I'm, I was not hearing what you were saying about <laughs> this thing. I apologize. I just arrived back in the room. <laughs> I'm sorry. So what I was saying, so welcome back. Well, what it's I was saying was that it's hard to hear things, feel things from your body when you're dissociated. Hard to feel like you mean like physical thing, like pain and, and not stuff? pain, but I was talking about warmth, like heat in your chest from, from warm feelings, emotional feelings from your heart. Oh yeah, I've never understood when people. See. I always thought people were lying when they were like, "Yeah, I feel like butterflies," and I'm like, yeah. "What does that mean, though? Like, yeah. you don't actually feel that." You yeah, know? you'd kind of do. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I don't. It's <laughs> good yeah. to know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's unfortunate. I mean, I don't know, dude. Like, what? So, so what's the first move then? If if dissociation is that big of a a problem, what's the what's the first step to get away from that? To bring it, to, um, this Vegas nerve. Do I got to go to Vegas? It, it is the Vegas nerve that's doing it. Uh, it. It is well, a really good therapist would uh, help you, would expose you to more and more emotional material that you would learn to tolerate with that person helping you feel safe. Essentially, does that make sense? Got gotcha. you. It, oh, it's, yeah. it's not something that you can do on your own. Is is a uh, is what is that called? Um, oh, that. Two tap thing, the taps. Tapping, Sickler was talking tapping about it. Is what was another, that? Yes. So, so you you tap. You can tap any. You typically do on the legs. It's a, just a way to keep you back in your body. There's mm. all kinds of little techniques like that. But but I'm not I'm not too fond of that stuff. Again, unless you're with somebody, because it it's it, it's very. I mean, it, it will teach you that you can get back in your body. But I want to teach you not to dissociate, right? And that really kind of requires another person. That Remember I, I said that vagus nerve is a socio-emotional exchange system? So it turns out that you talking and somebody talking with you and you sharing that, that safe socio-emotional environment works the vagus nerve out in such a way that it doesn't stimulate dissociation. Let's put it that way. Okay? All right. I will, right. I will try to find somebody That's who can help not me easy. with this. You can do it with it's a not... friend. You could do it with a friend. If you feel safe with somebody who's willing to sit and listen to you for half an hour, talk about feelings, it might be the case that you could sort of build yourself into a, a capacity to tolerate more of this stuff. Andy, look no in, further, in, buddy. I'm in, here yeah, for you, I'm bud. not sure that would be f- feeling zero particularly percent. safe. Zero, zero. You notice how the rage has gone now? On the knob, though? Now, now it's just like, no. <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> Very interesting. Um, but, but I want you to know, I had a certain amount of that too, myself. What, and, association? Uh, yeah, I did. Mm-hmm. And, and I wasn't aware of it like you are. I didn't realize. I, I had a, um, before I had quite a bit of therapy, I would ha- had anxiety disorder. And anxiety was my manifestation of sort of dissociating from feelings. And it uh, just was my thing. And, you know. Yeah, that's that's how it started when I was in a, I mean, this started when I was in, I think, fifth or sixth grade when I was unhappy and I thought, what if I was just happy anyway? I, I think I, I made that conscious thought of what if I just decided right. to be happy? That's right. I, I had a and certain amount of that myself in my early life too. And and that's really disconnecting. It, it's putting a low value in your primary emotions, right? Which are the things that come out of our body spontaneously right. and putting something on top of that and disconnecting from the body. And that's not good in terms of identity spontaneity feeling flexibly able to regulate it, it affects lots of stuff when you do that but yes i did the same thing around that same probably even younger but like third grade for me God damn. And, and um and but so it, so i i had feelings like I, I was not quite as thoroughly dissociated as you're describing but they would feel distant like they were out there i couldn't quite uh, and also they weren't particularly uh, things i attended to I, I would tend to other people's feelings which is, oh, yeah. was my codependency. Yeah. Right. Oh my God. Yeah. Codependency yeah. to the max, bro. Yeah. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Dob, did you know we're any and I, this is why he and I are bros. We share a common heritage. Oh, so that's why you and me aren't bros, Drew? Well, <laughs> any, <laughs> I just want to hang out with you, man. I just want to be friends. Any bud. calls <laughs> me by terms of endearment that you can't use. And they, and they and they and they are. I call you a different one, but it, it's not so easy on the ears. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Enough. Let's keep moving. We're we're going down. That's a good d- call, d- Drew. <laughs> dangerous call. territory. <laughs> <laughs> dangerous territory. Uh, let's see. Uh, Here, I got I got a couple more voicemails. That I think. All right. Fun. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Hey, mommies. It's Mike from Texas. 
Uh, so, Dr. Drew, mm. my wife wants a girlfriend. Ooh, ooh. So she told me recently that she is bisexual yes. and that she feels like she's actually been a lesbian her whole life. Yeah, boy. And apparently there's a large group of uh, women who are like this, who yeah. are in happily married relationships with heterosexual men um, with kids who feel that they are lesbians yeah. or they are lesbians. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, she told me this and I was understanding and supportive, even though it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. I yeah, suppose. you can't do anything about it. Uh, but the part I'm struggling with is that, you know, she's even gone out with a group of women who feel this way yeah. um, and want to explore their sexuality as lesbian. Of course. But the problem is, is that any time... I even look at another woman oh, yeah. or I've even made comments about any of her yeah. friends looking attractive. Yeah. She gets extremely jealous with me. And it's just this weird double standard. Yes. Not really sure what to do. Yes. Any advice here? Uh, Thanks. Th that is uh, rough. Keep it high and tight. I will. Love the show. Thank you, buddy. That, this is a heavy show. Uh, th that is a, that's actually a super, super heavy question. Um, I, I have talked to people in, the, in this situation. Uh, it is a delicate navigation in all cases. Uh, oftentimes you will find that your wife, your spouse is very much in love with you, but she has this part of herself that she needs to express. I, I always worry again, back to disintegration. You know what I mean? This part that's off over here somewhere. And I've got this other part over here. I would want to, I, I would want her to get in therapy to see if this can all be woven together in some sort of cohesive way. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of it. It's just that it's extremely threatening for your marriage in terms of for the very, some of the stuff you're talking about here, where you start to feel like, well, why should I tolerate this if I can't do that? And you get, to, you get into weird dynamics with this. It's hard enough to have a committed relationship with somebody homosexual or bisexual when you bring in a third person it gets much more complicated mostly because feelings come out that you don't expect and uh and as such i mean you know it's it's very, it threatens the primary relationship she could easily go you know what i'm all lesbian and i love this woman way more than i love my husband i want to spend all my time with her easily and, and so i don't know how long you guys have been married i don't know whether you have kids i mean I, you might want to, I, again, a couple's therapist and a therapist for her, especially to, again, not because she's sick, just because these pieces need to be attended to and she's sort of keeping them disconnected. Uh, and I just, unless you guys want to call it quits and you just know you want to do that, well, then fine. There's no problem here at all. But it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like you guys still love each other very much and you, you know, I had to get some clarification on where this is going and some a third party to help you navigate all these very strange things that are maybe strange is not the word difficult difficult things that are going to emerge give me another one can i just say by the way yeah buddy it's uh it, all of that i mean i don't know anything about it except what he just said but yeah. that all sounded like some red ass flags with her with him <laughs> saying uh she yeah. thinks I, she's bi and then she thinks she's been lesbian her yeah. whole life yeah, that yeah. ain't Bye, and then that's that's oh, bye bye to heterosexual. Yeah, that's bye that bye, is. exactly. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what that is. And and uh, and what else? She said, uh, like she, he can't look at girls, but she can. Yeah, I know. Fuck them, like I, uh, I that know. sounds a little. Yeah. I, I know what you're saying about like you need therapy to like discover if that really is manipulation. But well, hey, but it it's the, like <laughs> I'm saying that's just the first layer to what they're going through, right? Yeah, and, right. And when it actually happens, she actually does something. Who knows what other feelings are going to emerge on both sides, and including him maybe being so jealous he wants to. Who knows? You just don't know. That that's that's where these things have become so chaotic and challenging it's just a lot of stuff going on but yeah you you any if that were your spouse you might go okay i'm out that's it and that'd be a perfectly reasonable thing and probably better for the woman because i'm it kind of sounds like she's saying bye-bye to bisexual doesn't it it kind of sounds like she's like mm, on her way yeah but but not necessarily it's not necessarily so i, like, I have I've, i know couples where they're able to navigate this stuff they do it they do it. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it sounds like she needs her time to explore, but yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah if, and maybe it's, maybe it's it, a time damn. out for a while and maybe they get back to right. I mean, all kinds of ways of doing it. Anyway, right, one right. more, one more email, voicemail. Wow. No, no videos today. It's crazy. Or almost no videos. 
I forget what that man's name is, but good luck to you, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, Mike, Mike from Texas. Good luck, man. Hi, Dr. Drew. This is Ethan. Um, I want to say first, I'm a big fan of the show. been watching for a long time. And second, I wanted to ask, as a survivor of Munchausen by proxy, Oof. what are the next steps for recovery? Oof. I've moved out um, and I'm living with my best friend now, so I've got some space. But I want to know what I should do next to help keep moving forward. I also want to know um, what I can do for my siblings, as none of them are old enough to move out yet. And I want to know how I can support them while still getting the space I need for my mom, who has the Munchausen. Oh, boy. Thanks. Uh, don't be fucking stingy, man. <laughs> Ooh, putting a little extra spice on that. Yeah, no, you, he, no, you would be angry, too, if you were a victim of Munchausen by proxy. Trust me. Yeah, so for people that don't know what that is, that's pretty much like a, a, a parent that makes their child sick so you can keep going to the doctor, right? It, it, it either makes the child sick or insisting that the child is sick and taking them back to doctors all the time. Um... It's like hypochondriac like behavior it, it's, through it's someone else. It's hypochondria expressed through someone else. Exactly. Mm. So, so I mean, that is a very, very, very heavy, very, very again, this show, my gosh, uh, very heavy, very complicated question. Um, I, I, there, there's, I don't want to say this too emphatically, but I'm going to sound emphatic when I say you must have help with this. You must get some professional assistance with this. I, I, it would be irresponsible for me to give you specific advice when this is these are highly difficult, highly traumatic experiences you have to disentangle yourself from. And then you've got other siblings that may be in danger. There literally may need to be reporting done if you're prepared for this. Um, so, I mean, all that needs to be explored. I mean, if children are being abused, that needs to be reported. Now, you didn't say specifically they were. You said they were at risk for it. So it's got to be watched, and oh my goodness, this is so complicated. But Ethan, I'm glad you're out. Uh, you may tend to slip back, uh, and it's like anything else where there are medi medical psychiatric conditions that have problems with boundaries. It's really easy to get sucked back in. It's really easy to be manipulated, which is like, say, for instance, with drug addicts, we always say the people around the drug addict need to go to Al-Anon, so somebody's there with them. Same thing with you, man. I'm glad you got your friend there, but you need you need lots of resources. I, I don't know of any recovery groups from this. Uh, that would be a perfect sort of idea. I think start with some professional managers. You have somebody in your corner to help you pull you back. You know, first of all, get you whole again, and to pull you back if you start getting sucked back in. So, what's that, Nadav? No, I, I was just saying that. Like uh, uh, that. That's that's great advice. Should, should we leave it there? Should we let this be a heavy show? And just uh, <laughs> we, but to be fair, we started with uh, vaginas and and uh, cervical osses. And uh, here, you know what? What's inside? What's outside the body? You're gonna give me something to finish off with? Yeah, me <laughs> yeah. Maybe let's uh, let's finish off with a with a fun voicemail. All right. <laughs> He's gonna hey, be Drew. Okay. Um, I had a quick question. I was listening to the most recent episode about some guys masturbating, and it made me think. When I was a kid, every time I almost made white, I would just squeeze my dick hold it in yeah and now my balls are a little bit off they're not really like the same level what's up with that all right dick sucks ain't cheap uh what did he say uh he said dick sucks ain't cheating oh geez. which is true by the way <laughs> wow. true statement wow where did that one come from uh that's another that's another uh ymh all right uh i'm sure christina did not agree with that i'm guessing I think she came around to it. I don't really remember where she landed it. on it. They always coming come around, around to something. And coming around to anything in your mom's house is a scary notion to me. But, um, but uh, yeah, your balls always are off. That's the way balls are, and they actually can change positions sometimes. But uh, yeah, usually something hangs lower than the other. Has nothing to do with you squeezing your penis before ejaculating. Right. Because and, because we all know that uh, you can't get too much cum in those balls. You get too much cum in your bladder. Right, the bladder absorbs it. Wow, so the 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 prostate and seminal vesicles are what what push this the, where the the white comes from and what's pushed out. And if you create sometimes when you clamp down, you can create retrograde ejaculation, which pushes it back up into the bladder. That's what Nadav was talking about. Boom! Fucking but nailed it. Again, has nothing to do with the testes. Okay, really nothing. Uh, very very little. Which I can't, in spite of yelling about it every show here, people just can't get seem that through the get can't seem to get that through their head. Uh, somehow, the the balls and because they're a sack, they must be some sort of repository of semen. There's no semen in your balls, right? Maybe, maybe I can say that more clearly. Right. It's no just, semen in your balls. It's just piss mostly. No. 
It's a it's a it's a factory that produces testosterone and sperm cells that then find their way up into the into the mix with the semen. Let's leave it at that. It's always frustrating for me to try to try to bring that one home, but let's bring this show home. Thank you again. Uh, this has uh, been an interesting show. Dr. After Dark at gmail.com. If you like what we were talking about, send some emails there and some voice message. 818-253-1693. And uh, do check me out. Uh, find me at on TikTok at Dr. Drew on Instagram where I do some lives once in a while. Dr. Drew Pinsky, Dr. Drew Pinsky. And um, do check out the live stream streams at uh, drdrew.tv, drdrew.com. And uh, support the people that support these shows. I was thinking about it. Uh, I was, what was I using? I was using something, uh, maybe it was Bespoke Post or something. I was using some equipment. And I thought, we really do have good stuff here. We try to have only quality. Oh, there's all kinds of interesting stuff coming our way too. I've been sent some equipment lately that I was interested in trying. So here we go. There's more. St- that's, we'll get my wife in here to talk about that when those uh, advertisers show up. And, uh, but do, do support the people that support us here. We appreciate it. Uh, so we can keep doing this thing. We like it very much and we'll see you next time. All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts or posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.